Well, good morning, all, and uh, welcome to Eleven Ziz. I'm Kevin Williams of Survival Skills Rider Training. It's Wednesday, the 6th of January. It's turned into a bright and sunny morning out there today. Um, so what have we got for you in today's show? It's going to be a fairly short one again, I think. Um, I'll give you giving the uh, most optimistic press release award out this morning. Um, we'll be talking a little bit about bike training being shut down yet again and possibly recreational riding too. I'm just waiting for some confirmation on that. Uh, Kimco are putting a 550 three-wheeler into production and Triumph are uh, talking up their small bike plans, which is uh, coincidentally something I was talking about just the other day. So um, don't forget, uh, sort of uh, sit yourself down and uh, you can join me every Wednesday and Sunday at 11 for uh, my 11s show. Bit of topical news, some controversial views, and possibly some better biking tips as well. Um, right, okay, so on with the uh, content. Um, we've got Cheryl and uh, Nigel and Sue all saying good morning. Um, uh, yeah, Sue says, oh no, no recreational riding. I'll confirm that. I need to get some confirmation on that, but I'll let you all know as soon as I can. Right, okay, so what have we got? Well, let's have a quick look at uh, the uh, first picture of the morning. Um, I've probably just taken the wrong one off. There we go. Oh, there it is. Um, right, okay, yes, this is uh, possibly the most optimistic press release that came out uh, in December. Uh, the award goes to Welt Promotions uh, for their announcement of the South of England Classic Bike Jumble Ardingly, which was due to take place on 17th of January. As soon as I saw it come out, I thought, that's optimistic, that's not going to happen. And, of course, uh, now it won't, as you probably know. Um, right, that leads us neatly into bike training and uh, what's going on, of course. Um, it's shut down once again, as you probably expected. The DVSO have confirmed that riding and driving lessons must not take place until restrictions are lifted. Um, that apparently includes CBT again. Uh, all practical and theory tests are also suspended until all restrictions are uh, knocked on the head. Um, what's unknown at the moment is whether there will be an allowance for key worker testing and training. Um, right now, it appears not. Um, but an extended national lockdown on top of the shutdown of uh, training schools right across the country under the higher tier levels will create a real issue for people with expiring CBTs or for those key workers, in fact, who simply need to move to a power two-wheeler to get to work. Um, now, as the Driving Instructors Association have pointed out, it's important to consider the public health issue of inexperienced riders taking to the road, but um, and I have to say that I consider the level of training from CBT alone inadequate for today's roads. I've said that for quite a few years, and I say that as a CBT instructor myself uh, in the um, some years ago. Um, but with lockdown, we've got lighter traffic conditions, so the risks should be relatively lower too. Um, there are reports of people wanting CBTs um, and bike tests, uh, not understanding that they've been shut down, and getting quite abusive to trainers, in fact, uh, when told that they can't be done. Um, but, you know, in one way, you can understand the frustration. Um, what's making it so difficult for people to plan ahead is the uh, this incredibly long period of on, off, on, and off again. Um, and a growing number of riders, of course, are being caught by the two-year CBT trap, and the government have completely refused to consider extending that. Um, some might be hoping that CBT schools uh, will reopen in mid-February, uh, because that's the time kind of time scale that the Prime Minister was talking about on Tuesday for uh, the beginning of easing restrictions. But the, the pattern seems to have developed that Boris Johnson's bullish timescale delivered in his press briefing is always followed a few hours later by Michael Gove making a more pessimistic and probably far more realistic assessment of the situation. And Gove was talking about restrictions last 
lasting into March. Um, looking at the current load on the NHS and the, the virulence of this new variant of COVID, I think it's entirely likely that this lockdown will extend well into March, possibly even as far as the Easter break. Um, but whatever the date details, the number of riders with expired CBTs is going to continue to grow. What's so frustrating is that it's not as if the government haven't had warnings and reminders about this from the motorcycle industry. And I'm absolutely positive that something could have been done to help out riders with expiring CPTs by extending them. Okay, so, all right, um, on to the next item. Um, this is the Kimco three-wheeler um, that I was talking about. If I can get the picture to come up. There we go, that's it. Um, as I've mentioned before, these uh, three-wheelers uh, are a way around the CBT and learner restrictions for people with existing car licenses. Um, this one is a uh, the Kimco uh, CV3. Um, sounds like an American aircraft carrier. Um, it's a tilting trike, as you probably figured out, and it's been doing the rounds of bike shows in various concept guises since uh, 2017. But in 2021, it is finally destined to join Kimco's production models. The tilting front suspension um, setup is much like the design used by Yamaha on the Tristy 125 and 300 models. Um, there are two telescopic fork legs for each 13 inch front wheel and the rear is a 15 inch. Um, it's powered by a 550cc liquid cooled parallel twin um, motor which is down below the rider's sort of knees. It's um, mounted fairly forward which means it has a <coughs> quite a uh, sort of good 50-50 weight distribution. Um, the uh, the engine is obviously Euro 5 compliant, so that's good to go for several years to come. Um, it makes a, a decent 51 horsepower, um, which actually just puts it the wrong side of the A2 license, of course, but um, it should give it reasonable performance. Uh, seven, uh, 7,500 RPM, um, so it spins a bit as well. 39 foot-pounds of torque at 5.750, so it should be able to haul a bit of weight, even though its own uh, mass is a fairly portly 280 kilograms, um, which works out at just over 600 pounds. So it's, it's up there as sort of a, you know, with some fairly heavy motorcycles. Um, now, it's that weight that puts a lot of people off, but of course, once it's on the roll, um, with the extra stability of the, the third wheel, uh, you don't really notice it. Um, you know, that was one of the bits of feedback I got when I was in New Zealand in 2019, and uh, Dave Kilt, who was riding around on the Nikon. Um, the idea that people have is that these bikes are actually fairly uh, clumsy and uh, not particularly manoeuvrable. Um, but like anything, it kind of depends on who's riding them. So um, there's a quick video here that for you to watch. It doesn't go on very long. It's uh, nothing much happening um, yeah, to tell you anything about how the bike works. But uh, just watch how the rider actually manages to get that bike uh, nimbly through some cones and uh, just watch how the front end responds as well some serious road irregularities that was one of the things again that dave pointed out that it was incredibly stable on roads where he would have been you know concerned about riding his normal bike um is it coming to the uk well as yet there's no sign of it on the uk website but i wouldn't be surprised to see it come over here but don't expect it to be cheap. Um, if you think Kimco are a budget brand, think again. The AK550 scooter uh, from which the motor is pulled um, <coughs> will set you back no less than £9,000 over here. So my guess is that the three-wheel derivative of this will be way in considerably over £10,000. Um, that will probably, I have to say, limit it, its appeal um, except to people who really do want to use some kind of um, powered, well, powered three-wheeler to get to work. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, 
Triumph. Um, I mean, in the last webcast, I mentioned that Triumph were beginning to show a bounce back from a 40 million loss uh, for the end of their last financial year. Um, they've managed that by cutting production costs by moving their <coughs> main production plant to Thailand. Uh, but I also mentioned that um, by focusing on that sort of low volume, high profit sales pitch, they're in a pretty vulnerable position compared with other manufacturers. Now, interestingly, Paul Stroud, who's their chief commercial officer, uh, made a statement just the other day. And whilst he talked up uh, positive sales of the new Rocket Tiger and Street Triple as uh, you know, great news for the company and leading the bounce back, he said, um, in real terms, the numbers of these bikes are pretty small. They're what's known as discretionary purchases. In other words, you look at them and then you decide, do I, don't I? And you may well decide that you're going to walk away because you don't really need it. Um, so, you know, the the, uh, the problem with bikes like this is they're very much dependent on the buyer's financial circumstances. And we've all got a pretty clear idea, I think, of where the world is going in terms of you know, spending money over the next few uh, years. Um, and I pointed out a triumph like a small budget uh, model with the potential for sales in numbers, particularly out in the developing world. And I mentioned that the tie-in with India's uh, biggest motorbike exporter, which is Bajaj, um, which was uh, billed as creating a range of uh, lower capacity and therefore cheaper motorcycles, was yet to show any signs of bearing fruit. Now, in his statement just a couple of days ago, Mr. Stroud actually said that the first bikes to be produced under the Bajaj partnership would arrive on the global market in 2023. And he mentioned these would start at around £2,000 and that the range of uh, mid-capacity bikes would give Triumph a new entry point to high volume emerging markets, not just across Asia, but the rest of the world as well, including Britain. Um, OK, so what's been going on out there? Well, reports in the Indian press has been that the launch of the first bike, which was rumoured to be a 200cc model, uh, had been due next year, 2022, and had already been put back from to 2023 due to delays in its development. Um, well, if that's true, that's a bit of a disappointment. But um, you know, it's, this bike has certainly been a long time in gestation. A Triumph single was seen quite a few years ago now. Uh, I can't remember, I quite remember when I saw the story, but I suspect it was at least five years ago. Um, so the um, this test mule was seen out and about round Hinkley. So they they were working on a small bike, um, you know, as I say, some considerable time ago. Um, Mr. Stroud, however, said that everything was fine as far as he was concerned. Uh, he said, in terms of the partnership, it's still very much on track, and we're looking at launching our range of models in line with the initial timeline, so there have been no delays to that project. We've been talking about a range of low capacity machines which will be sold all over the world. There will be higher volume potentially sold in Asia, but effectively the range will sit below the Trident 660. It will be built in India and it will be available in the UK and all over the world. So it does look like Triumph are very aware that uh, they are targeting a, uh, a limited market, a market which, uh, you know, sadly the age demographic is going up uh, year on year to, um, and looking to exploit new uh, sales potential. Um, and one thing that struck me about this was the um, that price point, £2,000. Now think about that. What are you going to buy for £2,000? Well, you're even going to be struggling to buy a Chinese 125 uh, these days. That's a pretty, pretty low price point for a new motorcycle. So it's probably going to be a 125 or possibly even a 100cc motorcycle. Now, while that will cater for very, very basic transport, my guess is that, that it's not going to be um, the only bike in that range. I suspect there may well be a modular approach to uh, building some slight, somewhat bigger bikes. Now, you'll think about modular design, and you'll remember that the Hinkley Triumphs have a previous history in that direction with the 750, the 900, and the 1,000 and 1,200, which are all themselves based on the Kawasaki engine. 
that um, used modular components. Now, um, the potential is that there, there could be the development of a 250 single and a 500 twin, and that would fit neatly above that uh, sort of 100cc, very bum basic bike for mass transport to give you something a little bit more desirable in the sales potential, something that also fits not just developing markets where there is a, a sort of move to upscale to some, um, you know, sort of more more, more um, desirable machines. Uh, think about KTM moving into those markets some time ago. Um, but also it could fit neatly within the EU's own sort of A2 license category. Uh, riders aren't stupid. Um, there's no point in paying over the odds for a you know, sort of much more powerful bike that you then need to restrict. And, you know, sort of a, uh, much as the new um, Trident 660 has been getting some glowing reviews uh, from the press, it also makes a bit of a nonsense of buying a bike like that and promptly slip, slapping a restrictor kit on it. So it could be that they'll be aiming to build a more uh, sort of say limited CC version of a machine. Um, the other possibility is that you do something like build a 350 twin and a 500 twin um, on the same chassis, just a slightly different block on the engine. Um, so there are there are options here that I suspect that Triumph will be looking to fill. Um, and I suspect that that A2 market will be one of their targets for the UK. Um, and all right, so that's it for today. Um, I'll close out by mentioning my new newsletter, which I hope to launch on Friday. Um, one of the things that I've noticed over the last few months is that uh, viewing numbers have dropped fairly significantly on Facebook. Um, whether that is people simply not using Facebook because of the depressing news that they've been reading on it for the last nine or ten months, I don't know. But I do know that, as always, um, posts that I put up um, some simply do not ever make it into people's e-box, uh, into their uh, timeline. So what I'm aiming to do is uh, bypass that by going directly to the email inbox um, via the newsletter. And, I, did, you know, the, the idea is that newsletter will simply uh, give you the link directly to follow back to Facebook and you'll be able to see the posts that way. Um, so, okay, um, sign up for the newsletter. I'll be putting information up about that on Friday with a bit of luck and then uh, you can get it delivered directly to your email uh, every week. All right, okay, that is it for today. As I said, a fairly short show today. All things being well, I'll be back on Sunday. And don't forget, if you want to catch up with old episodes of uh, 11s, you can see them here on Facebook, or you can head over to my YouTube channel, which is uh, Survival Skills UK and you can see them on um, my coffee page as well. So thank you very much indeed for tuning in again, and uh, we'll catch you in a few days' time. Um, anybody else did? Uh, uh, yep, yeah, uh, Sue just uh, mentioned there that uh, she agrees that she wasn't good enough for the road after CBT. Yes, I, uh, well, I think I might write somebody about that. Right, okay, anyway, that's enough for now. Um, I'll see you all. Um, on Sunday.